This is the DJI Mini 5 Pro, and it is a lot of upgrades. It's so crazy how much they were able to fit in this small of a drone. In this video, I'm going to compare it directly to the Mini 4 Pro, and I'm also going to compare it to the Mavic. Why am I going to compare it to the Mavic 4 Pro? Well, that's because realistically, the Air 3S has the same sensor as the Mini 5 Pro now. So there's no point in comparing it to the Air 3S, but the Mavic actually is the closest thing I can compare it to because it has the same spinning feature, arguably, which we'll get on in a sec, is even worse than the Mini 5 Pro. There are a lot of things that this does right. It's crazy to me that they were able to fit this all in here. And minus the questionable weight limit, this drone is pretty crazy. So starting off with the nighttime obstacle avoidance, this drone is really good. And what I mean by that is, yes, you have the same standard LiDAR sensor that you've had on the Mavic 4 Pro as well as the Air 3S, but the obstacle avoidance sensors, they are actually a little bit better than I feel like on the Mavic 4 Pro and definitely on the Air 3S. I think the Air 3S goes down to one lux and this goes down to 0.1 lux, which means that this actually can see really well in the dark when it is pretty dark. I actually found myself for the first time on any of the drones that I've flown able to fly it in something that I thought was pretty dark and pretty much nighttime dusk and it still had obstacle avoidance. It also dynamically adjusts each of the sensors so that certain sensors will be on and off if one side's too dark but the other isn't. It will still enable that obstacle avoidance there. So it really is highly effective and I thought really good. Now yes, the LiDAR is great. I personally want to say it's on par with what the Mavic and the Air 3S have. Really could not tell any difference. It did have a couple times where I felt like it should have flown forward and it didn't, but overall pretty phenomenal there. Another important thing too is that this drone does support waypoint maps. You can do fully automated missions. You can have it fly and capture pictures if you want to make ortho mosaics, maps, 3D models, etc. You can do that. I already have my full photogrammetry review of this drone out already, so I compare it to a bunch of different drones and how much it's improved. So if you want to look into 3D scanning, that's an optional video I'll have included in the description. Another thing that you'll quickly notice is that this drone actually does fly faster than the Mini 4 Pro. I think it's just because the LiDAR can do a better job at detecting obstacles, but it does fly substantially faster with obstacle when it's on, at least when you're going straight. And I found that that was actually pretty useful. It's crazy to me just how much of the other drone segments are kind of cannibalized by this drone, which we'll touch on in a second. The parallel charger that comes with the DJI Mini 5 Pro does advertise the ability to be able to charge multiple batteries together. However, um, I think it says two at the same time. However, if you get the plus kit like I got, you actually can only charge one at the same time. So it is a little bit frustrating in that regard. I wish I would have been able to kind of charge multiple plus batteries at the same time as well, rather than just still waiting for one at a time. The batteries are also compatible with the older drones. They're interchangeable. You can swap them out. I do think that overall the batteries at least match in color. So the drone itself is also darker, which I have uh, something I tell my, told my brother is I feel like the darker they make the drone, the more uh, expensive it's supposed to be. Like the, the Mavic is darker, the Mini 4 Pro is light, and the Mini 5 Pro is now the same color as the Air 3S. So it just seems that the color has changed. If that's important to you, also keep that in mind. So we'll touch on the weight issue in a second, but one of the things that I saw, at least what I thought at first is, oh, maybe you could take off this front cover because it does look like it's removable, but it's not. So the ND filters that come with the Flymore kit, at least that I have, they clip onto the front here. So they are actually a pretty solid, they clip in and they kind of snap over it, which depending on you know your preference is something to keep in mind. Also keep in mind that an SD card or a ND filter is going to easily push you over the weight limit. And also, since we're on the weight limit topic, this drone's about two and a half grams over the weight limit, which there's been a lot of questionable stuff going on on whether or not there was a speaker added and whether or not that pushed it over the weight limit. Actually, I was able to weigh two different DJI Mini 5 Pros and both of them were a little bit overweight. I have a drone meetup that I go to every month that's in Raleigh, North Carolina, where all us drone pilots in the area, we all meet up. So I actually ended up buying two of these and one of them I was able to sell at market price to one of the guys from there. And his ended up being the exact same overweight amount. So I do think there might be some 
if I were to assume or make a wild assumption, I feel like probably the reason why in the EU they were able to get the C0 rating was probably because there was that speaker, the probably the licensing or regulatory agency over there, probably wanted that speaker in there for some type of regulatory reason, maybe just because it had the button for the push to start or something, so they wanted direct user feedback, some type of user interface slash pilot control, and they probably required them to put the speaker in there after they had already produced the drones. So in order to appease them, DJI probably pushed to get the C0 rating, even though it was probably going to be over. So probably what they submitted was 250 grams, but with the speaker that was probably mandated by regulatory agencies, it probably pushed them over. The keep that in mind is that you're flying this recreationally, you're gonna to need to probably register it. And also keep in mind that that SD card is going to push you over as well. Yes, it has 48 gigabytes of onboard storage, so you can use that but you also will chew through that pretty quickly. It's also a substantial step up in terms of improvement from the DJI Mini 4 Pro, which I think has eight. So you do have enough SD card storage to get by if you're really on a pinch, but I think most of us that are buying this drone now are not flying for fun for taking pictures. The Mini 5 Pro has kind of evolved into a much more professional, and in my opinion, probably the only drone you really need because a lot of the same features that are on the other drones are present here. Now the only deciding factor is really just the camera quality, which the Air 3 has the same camera now too except the 3x zoom is not present on this drone obviously but the 2x is pretty good another thing too is if you choose to get the fly more package you're actually going to have a larger bag this is my bag for the dji mini 4 pro and i have my nd filters my parallel charger and my controller and this bag is barely able to hold it all personally it's a little too tight so the nice thing is that this new bag is a little bit bigger, so you can fit a little bit more in there. I do feel like it's actually personally now too big. They could have just easily made this bag slightly larger, but overall, I think it is an added plus that the bag is now bigger. Another major improvement to this drone is actually the propellers themselves. The propellers themselves are click in, and so you can now remove them without stripping the screws, which is really good because I personally found that it was quite often I ended up trying to strip the screws and trying not intentionally to do it, but it ended up happening. So it's nice that these propellers now have this ability to click them in. Also an interesting thing, which is how I think they got a longer flight time, is the propellers themselves, when they spin, they pull out and then they lock in place. And I think that's how they're getting the added efficiency. When you unlock the drone and you kind of fold the drone out, it will automatically wake up. Aircraft will power off in five seconds. Press any button on aircraft to cancel. And now you also have the ability for the drone to automatically detect when it's unfolded and folded back together. And you don't even have to push it to turn on and off, which is also an added plus similar to the Mavic. But I think the speaker now tells you kind of some of that information as well. So I do think that's how they got that 52 minute flight time or the 36 minutes on the non plus batteries. So I do think that is a interesting efficiency tweak. And I personally do like this a little bit better. I have had some issues in the past with the propellers themselves, the hubs getting a little bit damaged because they're fiberglass. So if you crash, just keep that in mind that that is a lot more of a potential failure point versus with the old mini four pro you do have not have that issue, but you do have the issue of stripping the propellers. Another thing that I also noticed is that the transmission quality on this drone is better. And I felt like I noticed that most when I would put the controller behind something like maybe under a table or behind a little wall or something like that, it would still transmit through objects better. I don't know if the actual like line of sight distance has really changed much. I didn't really notice that much of a difference in test, but if the controller, and what I mean by line of sight for the FAA, I had my eyes on the drone, the controller just went behind something. When the controller was behind something, that was when I noticed the biggest difference. I didn't notice a difference with line of sight, just to clarify FAA. So just keep that in mind is that if you're looking for that kind of a situation, that definitely is very much an added plus and I found it pretty solid as well. Also the GPS on this drone is connects to a lot of satellites. It's like 36 satellites. Supposedly there is an upgrade to the constellations that this will connect to. So I personally found that the GPS kind of going into the return to home and the LIDAR and stuff like that is also really good. So if you haven't tried one of the return to home features on the newest set of drones, it's really good. It's really precise and it will fly through and down and it will repeat the same path that it came. So just keep that in mind that when you fly this drone, the GPS, especially high in the sky, is really solid. I think we're getting to the point where the, the drone itself has such an accurate GPS that I don't want to say it negates some of the need for, if we're talking about like survey grade stuff, RTK has its purposes, but 
the accuracy is very close and it definitely does stay rock steady compared to what we saw on the original launch of the like Mavic 3, just like Mavic 3. There was a lot of GPS issues with that. It's crazy that this is a much smaller drone and has a much better at least feel in terms of GPS. Also another thing too is that the camera strap itself, which I'm gonna add this in here because this is really nice, is a single unit to not only hold the propellers but also to cover the cameras and the lenses on the front versus with the Mini 4 Pro, it does have two parts. You have the propeller strap and then you have the gimbal guard. I like this a lot better. It's very similar to what they did on the Mavic 4 Pro. So I do like this a lot better. It's a lot easier to use and it's one less thing to lose because now you only have one instead of two pieces. In terms of camera upgrade, yes, you have that one inch sensor. Yes, you can record at a higher frame rate. Instead of 4K 100 FPS, you have 4K 120 FPS, which is an added plus. So keep that in mind as well, is that if you are using this drone, you get the added plus of that higher recording frame rate. And of course you get two megapixels extra of pixels when you take pictures compared to the Mini 4 Pro. Now, yes, this one inch sensor, which we'll talk on in a sec, is definitely noticeably brighter and less noisy, much more than I would think for a one over one, 1.3 versus a one inch sensor. That in paper doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but I definitely did notice that. We'll touch on that in a sec. Another crazy thing to me is that this drone is pretty much identical to the Mavic's capability to rotate the gimbal. I really, really think it is weird, in my opinion, that the this drone, yes, it has the vertical portrait mode, yes, it has the horizontal mode, but it also allows you a lot more flexibility, and I personally prefer it better than the Mavic 4 Pro, because I found that this drone will actually allow you to tilt the camera vertically and also tilt it 100% down. With the Mavic, you actually have a hardware restriction that it can only go so far down once it is vertical. So I found that actually you had a lot more flexibility with the Mini 5 Pro than you did with the Mavic to do creative weird shots. So if you wanted to have it look down and then turn sideways and track something, you could. Whereas with the Mavic 4 Pro, you couldn't. And I know that technically it can't rotate looking straight the same amount, but I also personally found that I didn't use that that much. If I really want to do complete barrel rolls, you probably want to get the, the Mavic 4 Pro, but I didn't do that. I really didn't, I found that kind of dizzying. I didn't like how that looked versus when you rotate downwards, you can also go downwards and rotate it vertically a lot more than you can on the Mavic 4 Pro. And I actually preferred to use the Mini 5 Pro over the Mavic for those creative shots. So in my opinion, much better on the Mini 5 Pro than on the Mavic. Another thing I wanna add in here too is that the tele mode, the 2X mode on this is good. It is basically just a digital crop though, and it is very similar to what we had on the Mini 4 Pro in that you can zoom in digitally and still record. I also think though that that's okay, but at the same time, the Mini 5 Pro, the 2X is cool. If you're doing video, it looks solid. I think just by having a nicer sensor, you have that capability and it looks better. So it is nothing but a digital crop. If you take your pictures, especially if you're taking pictures, just take your full resolution pictures and crop in later in post. They do advertise it. It says like it's 50 megapixels even when it's cropped in, but I think they are just taking the image, upscaling it and not really doing anything with it. I literally zoomed in, put them side by side, can't really tell any difference between the 2X and then the cropped in version. So I don't think there's fundamentally any different hardware there. In terms of camera and video, the pictures out of this are substantially less noisy when you take pictures, especially at nighttime, especially video at nighttime, but just overall so much less noisy. And I personally really prefer that. I just, it doesn't make sense to me how they were able to fit this all in here. And also at the same time, it doesn't make sense to me like how this, this little bit of a camera change made that much of an upgrade. Um, so it's very visibly a much better camera. It's also of course a Sony one inch sensor, but still it's a pretty solid camera. It's crazy to me that Sony makes one inch camera sensors you can buy, but with like the LiDAR and the camera here, this is a really solid camera on its own. So it's, it's crazy that they fit all this in here. Um, but I personally just noticed such a, a drastic difference between taking the, looking at the pictures and then comparing them to what I was able to get on the Mini 4 Pro. Yes, the obstacle avoidance on that is great, 
but it just seems like the sensor is finally what everyone had been asking for. I remember seeing on forums, everyone's like, you know, I'll buy a mini when it has the one inch sensor. Well, now it does. It might be overweight by the way, but it has the one inch sensor and it has great obstacle avoidance. Um, I personally, this was like the, the stretch goal. I thought DJI might someday pull this off. I didn't expect it to be like two years after they launched the, uh, the mini, uh, four pro, but I, I'm going to be hard pressed to see what they add next because I really, really think that they might be able to finally get it under the weight limit. I feel like, but in terms of adding features, I would be pleasantly surprised on what they could add next. Um, maybe LIDAR in some different directions, maybe the ability to optically zoom in and the sensor, maybe, but after that, fundamentally there's not a lot more they can change. And I really would be curious to know like what that looks like in the future. I'd love to be surprised, but, um, adding another camera on here possibly, but I think the reason why people get the mini is because it's at its core is fundamentally the same drone that we've had for years, just smaller, more portable and more reliable and more safe. So I think overall, I'm really looking forward to see this and see where this goes. Um, I absolutely love this. And I think if you're looking to get a drone and you've been wondering what drone you want to get, I have a Mavic, I have the Mavic 4 Pro, I have the Air, I have a whole bunch of different drones. I personally think like this is all you probably need. And what I mean by that is if you have a Mini 4 Pro, you're probably fine. Um, if you really want the nicer sensor, that's great. If you've never gotten a drone, this is probably the only drone you're probably going to need. Um, I personally, if I take this on vacation, it's going to be the drone I take on vacation. I'm not going to take the Mavic. Um, if I'm doing professional work, I'll probably take the Mavic, but I could have easily gotten by with the Mini 5 Pro. So fundamentally, I really like this drone. I'm blown away that they were able to fit this all together. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes next. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see how you can use this drone for 3D scanning, I have a full tutorial video explaining start to finish how to do that. You can make 3D models. And check that out in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you around. Goodbye.